Well, the inspiration of Texas Rising uh, was something that had been bowling around. I created a show years ago called Walker, Texas Ranger. So I love the Texas, uh, I love the, the whole feeling of being in Texas and the Texas Rangers. And I always am looking for a story that is very familiar, but completely unfamiliar. Like the Hatfields McCoys, everyone knew it was about a feud, but they didn't know what it was about. So I started thinking about the Alamo. Everyone's heard of the Alamo. Everyone knows what happened at the Alamo, but they didn't realize that what happened wasn't the end. It was the beginning. And as I looked into the story of Texas, it really was about a people forging a nation. And that's something that the world could relate to. Everyone would be interested in. And the struggles that we have, even through today, we were talking about uh, what's Ukraine. happening in the Ukraine or in the Mideast. People are fighting for land. And this is a story about Comanches and native Karankawa, native Indians living in a land where they didn't have borders, they just roamed the land as, as part of their belief. And then the, the Mexicans claimed it as their territory, it was a part of the nation of Mexico. And then you had the American settlers that were coming in from the Americas and the frontiersmen. And then you had the European pioneers coming in and then they formed a little country area as a state and they were called Tejanos. And before you know it, all these different people wanted to live and exist in this land under their terms. And fortunately, that's where the conflict came. And that's a story that is historical. And it's a sad cycle of violence that we live through today, but I thought it was an interesting story and very compelling. Basically because of Leslie in many ways, actually, because he's a very compelling storyteller. Um, <clears throat> and also because I think the arena is really, really interesting. And I felt that Leslie also wanted to make something very visual and exciting and different. And that's why it's the first show that's been made and it's going to be broadcast widescreen. I mean, it's, it, it's a game changer, really, and I think that was very exciting. But there's also something in the story that I really like. We talk about the kind of broad history, but it's actually it's a story about individuals. And in that way, Leslie had kind of written a, a real kind of cowboy story. Because cowboy stories are all about people facing moral dilemmas, learning who they are, fighting against the landscape, building something, making something of themselves. And that's really the heart of this story. It's about people making something of themselves, whether they happen to be a general or just a farmer. And I found that very compelling and interesting. Well, TV is, now is very different. I mean, I actually made films for television. I mean, the first thing I did on television, apart from the sort of TV series, was actually a film called The Sponges. I think one of the pre-Italia in its time. And we made that, but it was a 16 millimeter camera and it was very compressed. And, and in a way, although one was doing something, you, one knew that one was really doing illustrated radio. And what's happened now, and particularly with the kind of pushing of people like Leslie is, that's gone. That, that just was a, an old technique that was hanging over. And the fact is, people are waking up to the idea now that at home people have home theaters, they have much wider screen television. In other words, they can have a cinematic experience. And that's a big change, and television's on the cusp of it. I think we're leading the way in many ways. HBO did great things, and Netflix are doing great things in that way as well, but this is a, this is a network um, history channel that's had the bravery to say, you know what, we want to make something fresh and something visual and something new, and I think we're at the forefront of it, and that's exciting. First of all, we're not telling you we're doing historical drama. We're not telling you we're doing uh, the, the story of Texas. We're bringing, we're bringing an adventure, a saga, of what, and we call it Texas Rising. Now we base it on certain historic facts and we're very, we're very truthful as best to our research and our ability to maintain the integrity of certain characters and certain historic events. You can't say someone died who didn't die. You can't change an outcome of a battle that happened. But within that, we wanted to make sure that the viewers felt a journey of what it was like to live in that time. I learned that from Kevin Costner. Don't take a 21st century lens or point of view or philosophy or political analysis and apply it to what it was like to live in the 19th century. The way people thought, the way they, their restrictions, their, their fight, their survival, their perspective, 
was completely different. So we might think harsh now or racist now or perhaps um, prejudiced now. At the end, in those days, that was the way those people had to live. So we wanted to tell a story about people. And we created fictional characters that were composites of different people that happened so that we could give people the experience and the excitement and the entertainment value of going back and watching what it would be like to struggle through uh, and, and, and live in that period of time. Well, the biggest challenge I had was finding a director that had the brilliance, that had the ability to capture the period, the performances, the texture, and that once I did that, then my job was done. So that was your problem after that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I think the, what Liz is saying about taking people back into the time is very important because we're dealing with horses. You're dealing with the fact that the guns in those days fired one shot and that was, that was it. So we had to rethink everything about what the battles were like and how they were, what it was like for real, but at the same time make them exciting. And I can say that working with 150 horses makes working with 150 actors like look like a piece of cake. I mean, horses basically go where they want. But that was exciting because you're thinking, well, at the same time, we've got to kind of choreograph this. We've got to make it thrilling and visual. And we don't have all the resources in the world, but we've got to make people feel they're at the battle. We've got to make it feel large and dirty. Yeah, dirtying things down was something we really needed to. We wanted to make it feel like life. I was telling Leslie one, a few weeks ago, I watched um, um, one of the Indiana Jones films came on and I was watching a bit of it and the actress is walking across a set in Egypt in a perfect white dress. And I heard this voice in the back of my head, which was Leslie saying, that's too white, she can't be that white. She shouldn't be dusty if she's in the desert. What about a bit of sweat? And of course, that's what we did every day was we had to make it feel real. It was exciting. When you have a lightning rod, like Roland Joffe as a director, everybody wants to work. And then we were fortunate enough to have a good script that was resonating with everyone who read it. So what was a big help was that everyone who jumped on this production joined it because they wanted to do it. They didn't need a job. There was no big payday. This was dirty fingernails, we were three hours outside of Durango in Tule, Mexico in the mountains. No Wi-Fi, no cell phones, just dirt, cactus, heat, mud, rain, and sludge. And I said, does that sound good? If it sounds good, you know, and it's riding every day. And these guys were like, well, let's mount up and do it. And they, they would follow him anywhere. I think, you know, the, the Leisure really got together a terrific cast who all had very, very different chemistries. And that was very exciting. I mean, Olivier Martinez, who's wonderful in the part, but he's a Latin. And that meant there's a truth to his Latinness in the story. It wasn't just a kind of cliched Mexican was created here. Bill, who actually is descended from Houston, funnily enough, or is related in some way to the family, has something quintessentially American. And those are wonderful because there's an automatic dynamic between the way these two people interact that's truthful and is enjoyable because it's truthful. And Ray Liotta, who's wonderful in this movie and plays a really important part, because in a way he's the metaphor for what happens in war when revenge is born. Revenge is a terrifying thing, and it's the worst aspect of war, is that it can get out of control. And then that requires an immense kind of strength of character in every part to get over that. And, and Leslie, as a writer, created this terrific character who Le Ray has really brought to life wonderfully. I don't think anybody else but Ray could have done that. And that's what's wonderful about working with a very broad and set Jeff of talent. Jeffrey D. Morgan had that old kind of Stoic Western, a, a, a man who just believed in country and, and a patriot, he's dying, but no matter what, he's, he, he, he held a degree of honor that, that you don't necessarily find today. And these are old, these were men. I mean, let's talk about one thing I, which we haven't. We should talk about men are men. Yes, that's true. Well, some women who watched this have actually brought this up, but they, they watched it and said, God, we love the men in this movie. And I said, well, why? And they said, because they're men. And they act like men. And my God, as women, we're so bored of men who can't act like men because you can't be a good woman if you can't find a good man. And I think that's very true, actually. And, and even the kissing in this movie, and I kind of did that deliberately the way we choreographed the kissing. The kissing is done by men. And there's a kind of strength in the kissing that I know women find attractive. I know because I find it attractive. I enjoy doing it. But 
And that's, that's tremendously important because it brings a life to it and it means that this story is not just for men to watch, this is a story that has women strong women characters in it.